Good morning, McDonald Ducks. It's Mrs. Sanford coming to you from the library. Can you guess what part I'm in? If you said nonfiction, you are right, because today we're gonna read a nonfiction book. That means it's a true story, and this one is about a true lady. Her name was Dorothy Thomas, and she was a librarian who drove her library around in a truck. So we're gonna go ahead and read this and sit back and enjoy. I love seeing all those smiling faces out there. This is called Miss Dorothy and Her Bookmobile. Now the author of this story is Gloria Houston. That means that they did what? You're right, the author wrote the words. And the illustrator is Susan Condy Lamb. And if you don't know what the illustrator does, shout it out for me. You're right, the illustrator draws the pictures. So um, sit back, relax, and enjoy my story. Not my story, the story I'm reading. Miss Dorothy and her bookmobile. And this book is dedicated to all the librarians who bring the world to our doors. When somebody dedicates a book, that means that they're just kind of giving a shout out or a thank you to somebody who helped them or maybe was an inspiration to them. When Dorothy was a young girl, she loved books. She loved people. So she decided that she would become a librarian. She would be in charge of a fine brick library, just like the one where she checked out books in the center of the town square in her hometown in Massachusetts great illustrations. Looks like her friends are having a lot of fun playing. So she went to Radcliffe College where she read almost all the books in the big school library. Now that's one question I get from a lot of you. Mrs. Sanford, have you read every book in our library? No, I have not. There are over 14,000 books just in our McDonald library. I've read a lot of them, but not all of them. So good for Dorothy for reading almost all the books in their library. Well, then she went to library school where she learned all the things a good librarian should know. Finally, one bright spring day, Dorothy graduated ready to be a librarian in a fine red brick library, just like the one in the center of the square in her hometown. Soon, however, Miss Dorothy fell in love and she got married. Her new husband wanted to move to a farm in a land she had only seen on maps. It had deep green valleys and cascading streams, splashing silver, shaded with oak, maple, and fir. And if you don't know what they mean, those are types of trees. At the base of High Mount Mitchell, in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. Looks beautiful. The land was lovely there, and Miss Dorothy's garden was lush and tall. Out in the fields, wildflowers bloomed, red, yellow, blue, and gold. Inside her cozy house, Miss Dorothy read all the books on her shelves and her new friends and neighbors brought her books to share, just as they shared vegetables from their bountiful gardens. But there was no library, and there was no place for Miss Dorothy to become a librarian. So sad. Mm. Then one day, a meeting was called of all friends who liked to read. We need a library to store the books and to check them out. Miss Dorothy said, and then Dr. Masters, the eldest man in the community spoke. Once we had a rolling library here, he said. Dr. Wing over at the boys school shared his books by placing them in every post office, church and store. He took them from place to place in wooden crates on an oxen wagon. A library is a building with shelves and books and windows, Miss Dorothy said very sadly. 
Mrs. Erickson, the music teacher, took off her hat and placed a dollar bill into it. This is to buy a bookmobile, she said, and everyone placed the money they could spare into the hat, and they all agreed that Miss Dorothy should be their librarian. Now, I wonder how much money it takes to get a bookmobile. <sighs> Finally, the new green bookmobile arrived and everyone turned out to watch as Miss Dorothy lifted the side panels and propped them on support so the books were shaded from the sun and the rain. Many of the people brought books to Miss Dorothy's house and she stored them in her basement. Every day she struggled up and down the steep staircase, her arms loaded with books, just so she could line the shelves of her bookmobile. And sitting straight and tall, she drove the bookmobile over the hills and through narrow valleys, taking books to every schoolyard to visit every farm, post office, and grocery store. She went to every churchyard and parking lot. She stopped at the Tar Heel Micah Mill, and she parked in the courthouse steps at lunchtime whenever the court was in session. She was making sure everyone had access to books. If her readers could not come to the bookmobile, Miss Dorothy took the books to them. When elderly Miss Mommy had read all her books, she hung her husband's red flannel drawers on the line, and Miss Dorothy climbed the hill with more books to share with her reading friend. Soon everyone learned that Miss Dorothy would check out books wherever and whenever she happened to be, even in the middle of the North Tow River. The year the big rains made the giver rivers into oceans of mud, the embankments grew soft and slippery. As she drove around the bend in the river road, Miss Dorothy and the bookmobile went sliding into the rushing waters down below. <sighs> Miss Dorothy crawled out the window to cling to the side of the van until it came to rest on an island. I thought I'd be a real librarian, she told herself, scraping the mud off her skirt. In a fine brick library in the center of town, and just look at me now. Finally, a farmer on a tractor came down the road and saw the bookmobile. Miss Dorothy, he called. Do you have a book of poems I could borrow? As soon as you help me upright the van, she answered. And when the bookmobile was back on its wheels, she opened the door, swept out the mud, straightened her hair, and with a smile, she said, the library is open for business. The students at Riverside School stood waiting in line, sun or rain, for the little green bookmobile to drive into their schoolyard. Its wheels scattered stones at the side of the playground. No one was more excited to see Miss Dorothy than one brown-eyed boy named Ben who read every book about airplanes and every volume of great adventures Miss Dorothy could find. One day he told her, I will go see the world in these books for myself. Everywhere Miss Dorothy went, she made new reading friends. One of them was a girl named Barbara who could not go to school. She spent her days in a wheelchair and had visited a hospital in Massachusetts where she had seen the fine brick library in the center of Miss Dorothy's hometown. Miss Dorothy brought her stacks and stacks of books. You read faster than I can bring them, Miss Dorothy told her. But she was smiling the broad smile of a happy librarian who enjoys nothing more than sharing books with her friends. Sounds a little like me.
<laughs> One day, a reader donated a little white house to be used as a library. It will have to do, Miss Dorothy sighed. Remembering the fine brick library in her hometown, everyone showed up to clean and paint until the new little library was ready to go. The mothers baked cookies, the fathers cut firewood for the round black stove. Students loaded the shelves with books. Miss Mommy sent her best lace tablecloth and silver punch bowl. And she offered Miss Mommy's red flannel drawers for the flagpole too. Mm. An interesting flag. The years came and went, and after a while, awards covered Miss Dorothy's walls, and people came from everywhere just to visit her library and write articles about her and her readers in the land of the high blue mountains with deep green valleys and cascading streams splashing silver. Miss Dorothy rarely thought about that fine brick library in the center of the square back home in Massachusetts. She was far too busy in her fine little library where people loved to read and where everyone loved Miss Dorothy. You can see all those awards behind her. Every day, the mail truck brought letters from Miss Dorothy's readers, some from nearby, some from far, far away. One of them came from Ben, who was now a pilot in the U.S. Air Force. And he said, you showed me the world through books, and now I have to see it for myself. Thank you for being a librarian. And another letter said, thank you for loving books and for loving people. Although you were never in charge of a fine brick library like the one in your hometown, you are still a real librarian. You have readers who love you and the books you share. Thank you for bringing the love and the world to our door. Love, Barbara. And that was the end. There is an author's note in the back of this book, which happens sometimes, and that usually gives an insight as to why somebody wrote the book. If it was a fiction book, it might be something from their childhood that was stewing in their mind that gave them the idea for the book. When it comes to a nonfiction book, it was where this subject touched them. So I'm gonna read this author's note. Uh, Dorothy Thomas was one of my heroes as a child. Now this is being written by Gloria Houston about the subject of the story. Her little green van with a fresh batch of books would arrive every two weeks at the store my family operated. So she actually met the person, Dorothy Thomas, who this story is about. During alternate weeks, she would drive into the schoolyard and I checked out new books from her every week. The rural area where I lived had no library building, but residents were avid readers. Mrs. Thomas stored the combined library collections of Avery, Mitchell, and Yancey counties in her basement, carrying them up and down the stairs each morning and night. Many of my contemporaries from the area, including Ben Harding, James Bird, and Barbara Davenport, all people we heard about in the story, have told me that she was one of the brightest spots in their lives. Everyone remembers the tiny woman with great fondness and how she touched their lives, though no one living today seems to know where, <clears throat> where she is buried. There is no monument to her, no stone with her name on it, that is. Her memorial is the love of books she engendered in the lives of her patrons, young and old. That is all that I have for you today. I hope that in my little way, I am inspiring you all to be great readers. I miss you all. Look for me next week with another story. Happy reading.